Hey Vegas users, David McKnight here. I hope your holiday season is a good one. It's currently a frosty 70 degrees here in Houston, Texas, USA, and it's a little difficult to get into the spirit. So I figured it's a good time to talk about some of the new features in Vegas Pro 12. Be sure to read the article that accompanies this video on streamingmedia.com forward slash producer for an overview of additional features and functions in Vegas Pro 12. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the workflow items that have been added to make our editing chores a little bit easier. The first one I want to talk about is one that I detail in the article, and that's how to uh, apply a mask to just an effect. We're going to start with a couple pieces of media here. Actually, for this one, we're going to do just one piece of media. We'll bring up our pan crop window. And we'll also apply a video effect here, a pixelation effect. We'll drop that right onto our piece of media. And just so we're ready to go, when it's ready to go, let's add a little bit of pixelation here. Back to our pan crop. And now I'm going to select the mask. And you notice we'll have a couple of new tools here, a rectangle or a circle or oval mask creation tool. This makes it very easy to quickly add a mask. You can mask the, the track itself, but what I'm going to show you now is masking for an effect. So let's add, we're going to select this spot here, and then we'll come up and select again, and we'll select this face here. And now underneath mask, you have the option to apply to effects. It says no, we're going to say yes. Make sure we've really got that cranked up here. And you'll see that just the face, faces have been pixelated out. So that's a quick way to generate a mask and apply an effect just to the mask. Also new in version 12 is a, an improved Explorer window and Project Media window. One of the neat things I like about this is, let's say you're scrolling through some different things, you're trying to find something, got a piece of footage here, and say, oh, no, that's not what I want. And you come down to a different folder, The Explorer window now tracks all of your movements through your folders, and your back and forward arrows here will traverse the folders that you went through to get to wherever your current position is. And so you can quickly and easily go forwards and backwards through the folders that you clicked on, very similar to a web browser as you're going back and forth through pages that you visit. Another one of the editing features that I like that Sony has added in Vegas 12 is an identifying mark on the events to tell when they've been selected. You'll notice the event that is selected has a yellow border around it. That makes it easy to tell when you have a timeline full of events which events are or are not selected. Another new feature right on the event, you'll notice we have a couple of new handles. And these are here to show you the in and out points of the event. This one in the center is an easy way that you can grab the opacity of the event and increase or decrease the opacity. Okay, here's one of my favorite new features. And this is the ability to quickly and effectively perform a J or an L cut. Now, J cuts and L cuts are editing decisions that either the director or the editor or the producer will make. And this is a, a way to add to the story, to whatever the story is that you're telling. You're either a J cut or an L cut is either going to introduce the video before the audio or it introduces the audio before the video. And the reason they're called J or L is because of the way that they appear on the timeline. I'll show you what I mean. Now before, when we wanted to do this, you had to manually ungroup the event by clicking U, grabbing the edge, and trimming just the video or the audio that you wanted. So for example, we'll trim this one back, then we'll click this one and say ungroup, and we will move it forward. And so now you can see that this gap that's been created here looks like a J. If you were to do it the other way, flip it over, or in, uh, in this case, trim it up this way, this looks like an L. Hence, J-cut, L-cut. 
Now, there's a couple of problems with that. One is you've got to ungroup your media to do that. And then you've got to regroup your media back to continue on through editing session. So we, we used it and it works fine. But Sony's given us a keyboard shortcut now. This is our normal piece of media. It is, uh, I, I, like all media, it's grouped audio and video. But if you hold down the shift key while you trim, if you're trimming the video, only the video portion trims. The audio stays the same. When you release the shift key, your events are still perfectly synced. And the same is true with the audio. If you select it and hold the shift key, only the audio trims. The video remains as it was. Even those up. And so we have our jump cut here where they're both together. If you use the Control Alt Shift key, you can move both pieces of media, the in and out point of each piece of media, to put your J or L cut exactly where you want it on either the video or the audio. Another very simple, very useful feature for all of the events that are selected. If you apply a fade, a fade is applied to each event selected. So no more do you have to apply a fade to the video portion of your track and then apply a fade to the audio portion of your track. Select the video, select the audio, apply a fade, and the fade applies to both portions of your event. Another simple but useful feature, uh, let's insert a volume envelope into this audio track. Insert audio envelopes, volume. And let's say you've got a couple of uh, volume points here. Let's say your session looks something like this. And you want to quickly just get this back to zero. You can right click and now set to zero dB is a choice in your context menu. Simple feature, it's never been allowed before. You always had to enter it by hand in the set to. Now just right click, set to zero. Very handy. Finally, the last thing I want to show you today is uh, rendering, something that we always have to do, or usually always have to do. Sony's given us a couple of extra little features about that. So now let's just go to any of our renders here. Let's say we want to render up for the web. So we'll choose a YouTube render. If we minimize Vegas, the rendering uh, portion is now shown in the timeline. And when the render's done, you'll have a beep, a little uh, chime sound that plays through your PC's audio system. So you'll be able to tell, as long as you're in the same room or near vicinity, when your render's complete. It's a nice little feature to have. So folks, that's all we have for this uh, edition of Tips and Tricks in Vegas. Hope you've learned something. Check out the accompanying article. And uh, if you have any questions, contact us through Streaming Media Producer. And we will see you next time. Thanks.